Hey everyone, Miles with Hamilton Dog Training. So in this video, I'm gonna answer the question, is your dog ready for an e-collar? And I'm gonna use one of our online students' dogs as an example to show you what ready and not ready looks like, okay? So this is Mac, the Australian Shepherd. And before we started training, he was reactive towards other dogs, right? That's why she reached out to us. That's why we started training. And this is Mac here. This is just a little before clip just to show you, you know, what we were working with beforehand. Uh, she was doing lots of training with him already but he was reactive towards other dogs. So there's some dogs way out in the distance. You know, he'd bark at them, he'd lunge at them if they were close, you know, that sort of thing. He'd ignore commands around other dogs, you know, your typical leash reactivity issues. And she just couldn't solve this. That's why we started training. All right, so you can see those other dogs are at quite a distance and he's showing, offering that behavior. All right, so you can kind of see what we're working with here, right? So nothing super bad by any means, but you know, definitely enough to be annoying and still we need to get it fixed, okay? So that's Mac before we started training. Now, here's the big mistake that people make with the e-collar, right? Is a lot of people, they have a problem. You know, maybe your dog is leash reactive towards other dogs like Mac. Maybe your dog destroys your house. Maybe your dog doesn't listen to the recall. And a lot of people, believe that a tool will help them solve that problem. They think that, okay, I have this problem with my dog and I think investing in this tool or using this tool is gonna help me solve that. And that is not the case, all right? That is a really, really big mistake that I see a lot of people make uh, with their dogs is they, tr they try to jump um, to tools and they try to skip to tools. And the reason why that's not gonna work is because the reason your dog has these problems is because of you, you are the problem, right? And I don't mean that in like a, you know, attacking way. I just mean that that's, that's just the truth, right? And that's okay, by the way, right? You just don't, you just don't know. You don't know how to fix these problems. You don't know how to train the behaviors and that's okay, right? It doesn't mean you're a bad handler. It just means you're new, right? You're inexperienced. You don't know what you're doing yet. And that's okay. That's where everybody starts out, right? The important thing is that the tool doesn't do the training. You do the training. And so when you try to jump to a tool like that to solve a behavior, you know, maybe your dog is reactive towards other dogs like Mac, and then you try to jump to a tool, you're trying to skip steps because there are a hundred other little things that are going on, a hundred other little skill deficiencies that you have that's going to impede your progress, right? And if you jump to that tool, right? These tools, by the way, like a tool like the e-collar, these tools amplify your ability to communicate with your dog. And so if you have no idea what you're doing, if you don't know how to train behaviors, if you don't have no clue what you're doing, these tools are going to make everything worse. Your reactivity is probably going to get worse. Your everything's going to go downhill, right? Your problems are probably going to become bigger problems. And you're going to have to undo these things later on once you start actually training the proper way, right? And so you know, for example, um, if, if you have a dog who is leash reactive, you have a lot of skills that you need to work on. Okay, you're gonna need to learn how to communicate with your dog effectively, how to communicate with your dog non-verbally. You're gonna need to learn how your dog thinks, how they learn. You need to learn how to change behaviors. How, what's the difference between negative reinforcement and positive punishment? What's the difference? How do you properly punish a behavior? What behavior response are you looking for, right? All, all of these little teeny tiny things that a lot of people overlook, but are actually very, very important skills when it comes to training and communicating with your dog. You try to skip those steps and just jump to the tool. All of those holes, all of those flaws you have, all of those skill deficiencies are going to be revealed. And guess who pays the price? Your dog, right? Your dog pays the price of your skill deficiencies. That's the cost. The temptation that a lot of people have, right, is they have these behavior problems and they want to jump to the e-collar. Mac in these videos is not ready for an e-collar. He does not need an e-collar. There is, there is nothing productive that would happen if we started using an e-collar on him. Nothing. There, there would be no benefit. Zero, right? The only, the, the only potential thing that could happen is his reactivity gets worse because the handler isn't able to use it properly. And so that's why in our training program, we start out everything. Everything starts out on the leash, Everything starts out on the leash, right? Before you ever get to off leash, your dog has to be perfect 
on the leash. All of their obedience needs to be perfect. You need to learn how to fix all of their behavioral problems. You need to learn how to teach reliable obedience. You need to learn how to use the leash properly, how to communicate with your dog non-verbally. Once you put in that time to learn, you're improving your timing, right? You're improving your ability to reinforce specific behaviors. You learn how to punish behaviors and you're learning how to do all these things on the leash. Then once you move to the e-collar, it makes sense because you have these skills now. You see what I'm saying? But you have to have the skills in order to be able to use the tool first, right? If you try to hop to that tool, it's going to reveal all, all of the holes in your ability as a handler, right? And it's going to, it's not going to be very productive, right? So let me show you an example now. So that's an example of a dog who is not ready for an e-collar, right? So if your dog doesn't have perfect obedience, they're not, they have behavior problems, they're reactive, they destroy things, whatever it is, your dog is not ready for an e-collar. An e-collar is not going to fix those problems because the problem is you. The problem is you, right? And that's okay. That's okay. That's part of the process. It's part of the learning process, right? So now let's show you, she just posted this um, several weeks ago here, and she was just wondering if she's ready to begin the off-leash portion of our training program, right? So is Mac ready for an e-collar, right? So let's go ahead. We can just watch this video here. And you can take a little look. I won't play the whole thing for you, but you can just kind of see where they're at, right? Right, so it looks like they're doing some healing in a urban environment, right? With lots of people around. Right, very good. Very good. Healing around, navigating in tight spaces. You can hear the people around in the background, right? Very good. Tight navigations, right? But Mac maintains his focus on the handler. Very good. Very good. Now I'll offer my critiques. I offered my critiques, you know, on to the handler directly on them, some tips on how to improve. But like, what do you see in this video? Right? What do you see in this video? When you see the dog like this, right? When you see a dog walking around like this, your first thought probably isn't, oh, he needs a knee collar. You see what I'm saying? Right? A lot of people, they see a dog with problems and they assume that dog needs a knee collar. It's not true, right? We don't start using an e-collar on the dog until the dog is perfect, until the dog has mastered all of the obedience commands, until they're perfect on the leash, until they, they've eliminated all problems, right? Until the handler has improved their skills, that's when we start using the e-collar. Why? The only reason we use it is to give the dog that off-leash freedom. That's it, right? You can see they're doing a little uh, duration down here in a busy playground area. Got the dog in the back. Mac pays no peace of mind. He's like, that dog is irrelevant. <laughs> Very good. And Mac just holds his down and is uh, eagerly awaiting his handler to return. <laughs> she tosses a little ball to throw him off there. Good, but guess what? He holds his position still, right? Very good. Very nice. Again, right, guys? Your first thought when you see the dog like this is probably not, oh, that dog needs a knee collar. You see what I'm saying? Right? And also watch the handler. Right? In this next video here, I'll play. Right? Looks like they're doing some healing. In another urban environment. Very nice, right? And look look at how little she is using the leash, all right? Because this is what, one of the things that we get to, is once you've learned how to train these behaviors on a leash, the next step is to have the leash on and not use it. That's the next step, right? So you see, you have all these little prerequisites um, before your dog can ever use the e-collar, right? Before you are ever ready to use the e-collar, right? You see, no leash required here. She's using just verbal, very nice, right? And so, there are all of these um, 
The temptation for a lot of people is to start using the e-collar when the dog has all these behavior problems, and that's not the answer. The answer in that situation is to improve your skills, right? You have to learn how to change that behavior. You have to learn how to communicate with your dog non-verbally. You have to learn the difference between negative reinforcement and positive punishment. You have to learn how to reinforce behaviors in a timely, effective manner, right? You have to learn all of these little micro skills, and then once your dog is completely trained, You've taught them all the behaviors. They're totally reliable, even around distractions. Then you can start using the e-collar, but not until then, right? And you see what I'm, like, you guys can, you guys can get it here, right? Um, you know, I think it's a, a lot of people try to shortcut and skip steps here, but it's really important that you take the time to improve your skills on the leash before you ever take that leash off and start using a tool like the e-collar, right? Because the e-collar... Like, here's the thing with the e-collar. If you know what you're doing, right, you can start using the e-collar earlier than when the dog is completely trained, right? You can start using it earlier. You can use it to train certain behaviors in the beginning. But in my opinion, in my experience, for people, for your everyday dog owners, everyday dog owners, not professional trainers, just your everyday regular dog owners training their dog, it's much more beneficial to teach them how to use the leash first, get that solid base of skills, and then start using the e-collar, right? Because now they have all of these skills that they built on. They understand pressure. They understand release. They understand rewards. They understand timing. They know how to communicate. Then once you start using the e-collar, it's, it's such an easier transition. And in, in the handler's mind, in the human's mind, right? Um, and then also too for the dog, right? Because if you don't know what you're doing with the e-collar, you can create a lot of confusion um, with the dog and the dog pays the price, right? Okay, guys, so the answer to this question, is your dog ready to start using an e-collar? Well, is your dog looking like Mac in these videos, right? Is he looking like Mac? Is your dog perfectly obedient? He knows all the behaviors, no, no behavior problems. If he is, then you might be ready. All right, so just a little quick video for you guys, just explaining when your dog is ready for the e-collar. I hope this helps you out. Hopefully you can uh, prevent some of those mistakes and maybe not skip the steps and just start using the leash. All right. Hope this helps.